Hello, language and life-loving friends, and welcome to Creative Teaching and Learning Ideas with Patrick and Gable. I'm Patrick, and this is Master Gable. And today we have a fun presentation on a wonderful activity called Observation Journals. The title of our talk is Observation Journals, Helping ELLs to Appreciate Life Through Writing. So before we start, um, let's go down and do some exercises, okay? That way it'll stimulate our brains for the next uh, 45 minutes so that we can have a fun and exciting time through all of this. All right, let's begin. Hello again. Thanks for joining us for some quick exercises. First, we'll do three slow jumping jacks, followed by five quick ones, and then we'll conclude with three slow ones again. All right, ready? Okay, feel good? Okay, ready? Here we go. One. Two, three, and then five, four, three, two, one, and one, two, three. And let's complete this with three nice slow breaths. One, two, and three. All right, let's begin our session. So today's program is the following. Uh, introduction and exercise, and we've already done, done both. So I'm going to give you a short poem that I think exemplifies uh, the importance of observation. Then uh, I'll give you four of the inspiring aspects that kind of help me create the observation journal, you know, the observation project. Uh, and I want to define mindfulness for you, because that's going to be a key element as well. Then uh, I'll define the observation journal itself, and I'll give you two samples, uh, one that I wrote uh, based on a student's observation and one from a student that I had a few years ago. Uh, then I'll go over the categories of observations. We, we have six of those. Uh, and then uh, I'll go through the assessment, which is kind of a rubric to, to help you um, so that you're, you don't encounter the same problems as I do. I, I can kind of uh, shorten that up for you. Um, then I'll, I will give two major pitfalls that I encountered and you might encounter as well, and solutions. That, so again, you don't have to go through that. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna give you some variations. Uh, the observation journals, the, the amazing thing about them is they're not just observation journals, but you can use them for a number of other things. Um, and I'll point those out. Then I'll give you some student reported benefits and teacher reported benefits. Mainly that's me, okay? Uh, and then we'll end with I'll give you the references that I've used and some further reading that, that, that might inspire you uh, to use observation journals in different ways. Okay, so are you ready to begin? Let's start. So the poem, The Red Wheelbarrow by William Carlos Williams. I shall read it for you here. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens, okay? Very short, but very powerful. And it's all based on just the amazing miracle of observations. And I think if you close your eyes, you can see, you know, the red rain-washed wheelbarrow perhaps reflecting the chickens that are so important on the farm. So everything at this moment, um, whether it's the wheelbarrow or the rain or the chickens kind of comes together and shows the miracle moments of, of life. And that's kind of what these observation journals are all about, um, is teaching students how to appreciate the tiny moments in life that mean so much, okay? So, uh, let us look at the four inspiring um, points that help me kind of develop these observation journals. Now, you may have heard of observation journals before that are used uh, in ethnomethodology or in social linguistics or sociology where people go out and make observations and then, then write those up. But these are a little bit different. These are observation journals that I've created on my own um, and they're primarily for students to focus on really what's in front of them. So the, the, the four elements that kind of inspired me to uh, create these, are one, probably the most important, is a student's comment. Um, as you see on, on the screen there, uh, number one. And that was really pivotal because I had a wonderful student years ago and she's probably the best student in my class, but
but she wrote a comment on her evaluation at the end that, that really haunted me for years. And the comment was, the class was great and I learned a lot from it. And I was happy to read that part. But then she went on to say, but I know nothing about the city or the state, okay? And it really saddened me because this student was a student from Japan that was gonna go out and study in California and she was just taking our summer class and I thought, wow, she didn't learn anything of importance. I mean, yeah, the class material was good, but she probably could have studied that anywhere. What she really needed to know was about the local history and about the local culture and customs, and she didn't get that from my class. So I, I kind of consider that a, a failure on my part. But it was a great comment and it inspired these journals. Um, the next uh, point is I thought to myself, how can I get my students to observe the culture, observe the language, and then use it? And I thought these observation journals might be the key. Okay? Uh, the smartphone seduction, number three here. Um, I think it, it's maybe becoming, a, it's getting a little better, but at one particular point while I was teaching, I would walk across campus and I would count 10 students. And on any given day, eight of those students or nine would be looking at their plasma screen and not at all the wonderful things around them. And that also depressed me. I thought, wow, they're missing all these wonderful things going on in nature, on campus. Um, and I, I felt to myself, I don't want my students, international students that is, going back home and knowing nothing other than their dorm room, exams, exam stress, and their plasma screens. So I thought these observation journals will hopefully peel back um, uh, you know, their, their, their cell phones and they'll be able to look at life in front of them. Okay? Um, so, cell phones, smartphones, are they really smart? At any rate, um, the last is I just wanted uh, my students to imbue and embrace a love for writing, okay? And, I, and again, I thought these observation journals, if I kept them short enough and we, we worked on them on a, on a kind of a weekly basis, that would develop a love for writing and confidence in writing, okay? So, um, let us move on. Uh, let me define uh, mindfulness for you, okay? Um, to be honest, I didn't really do a lot with mindfulness when I first started this observation project. Um, I did the observation project for probably about a year before I started reading up on mindfulness. My wife had a wonderful book that's at the references. It's by John Kabat-Zinn. Um, and it's a wonderful book because you can actually take any chapter. It, it's not necessarily um, in order from chapter one to the end. You can kind of pick up anywhere in the book and, and benefit from it. But uh, John Kabat-Zinn was a, um, uh, a doctor out uh, in, in, in Massachusetts. And what he was working on wasn't necessarily helping his patients. And so he got into this idea of mindfulness and it, it helped his patients relieve a lot of stress and other unwanted things uh, in their psyche. And so uh, the more I started reading about this, I thought, wow, um, what my students are doing is actually participating in mindfulness. So I find it important to define that for you because it'll sort of help you um, explain to your students as well the importance behind the observation journals. So according to John Kabat-Zinn, uh, the practice of mindfulness is paying full attention uh, which includes three essential points. Um, doing it on purpose, okay, so you're fully conscious of observing. Uh, being in the present moment, so you're not thinking about yesterday or, or in five minutes, but you're really focused on the moment at hand. And then last but definitely not least, you're doing it non-judgmentally, okay? So you're not thinking, you're walking around and saying, oh, why is that person doing that? Or that's an odd thing to do. You're just simply observing it for the sake of the, observing it. Okay? So again, mindfulness is paying full attention, doing it on purpose, being in the present moment, and doing it non-judgmentally. Okay? So, uh, what are these observation journals? Okay? Um, it's really a focused entry about an observation. Okay? Uh, and that includes, one, a title and reference to a category. Now, I'm going to give you... Um, in the next uh, slide, I'm going to give you six categories. And I, I find it really important that the students uh, title the observation and give a reference to a category, okay? Because I, I found out one of the pitfalls that I went through is I just said, oh, you can write on anything. 
Um, and they did right on anything. <laughs> and sometimes this anything really didn't work out. Um, whereas I found if they wrote a title, something very simple, but if they just wrote a title in the category, it really helped them focus. Okay? So that's the first thing. The second is a lead-in sentence that introduces the topic. Okay? Um, and then a topic sentence that explains the focus of the observation. Okay? And we'll see that uh, in, in a, a real-life example. Um, and then the next kind of thing that follows that is a reason that states why the content of the observation is of interest to the student. Okay, what is it that pulled them in? What was that wow moment that pulled them in? Um, and then a developed example or explanation elaborating on the observation or the reason of interest. And then if they want, it's optional, but they can also give a cultural comparison. Maybe explain why this would or maybe perhaps wouldn't happen in their home culture. Okay. And then a conclusion. Okay. So um, let's take a look at uh, the, an example of one of these. Um, and I, I will read this for you. Okay. Uh, this is actually an observation uh, from a student of mine. And we talked about it after class. And I said, hey, this is a great observation. Um, they had already written on something else and so they didn't want to do it. And I said, can I use your observation and write it up as an example of what to show the, the students? Because I, I was teaching two classes and I thought this example might work really well for both. So here is an example of an observation journal. Okay? So the title, Holding, the doors, Holding Doors for Others, Opening Doors of Kindness. And here is, is the category, A Culture-Based Observation. When one person holds a door for another, it not only helps the person in need, but it builds a sense of compassion and gratitude among both people. My favorite observation today was when I watched a young woman who appeared to be in a hurry actually stop and hold the library door for a stranger who had both hands full of books and a book bag. This interested me because the woman who held the door was in a hurry but she took the time to be kind and patient with what happened to be a complete stranger. I liked how the young man, the stranger, smiled and said, oh wow, thank you. Then he looked at the young woman. She smiled at him before disappearing down the hall. This would rarely happen in my own culture because people really only watch out for themselves. However, here on the Nebraska campus, I see people hold the door for others all the time. But today's observation was special because I could feel a sense of humanity between the two people. In sum, I felt that the woman not only held the door for the man, but she also opened a door of kindness. Her action said, look, I'm busy, in a hurry, but I want to offer you a helping hand to make the day a little brighter. Okay. So again, we can see um, the, the focus on this, um, a lot of detail, um, and it's probably culturally uh, quite a bit different than what a lot of students are used to. Um, the next one was written by uh, a former student of mine, uh, Ana Maria from Colombia, and her observation uh, is about cell phones on East Campus, okay? And there were two, two parts of campus, as you'll see in the observation. Uh, again, this was a cultural observation. Um, so hers reads, um, our phones have consumed our minds for far too long. Okay, that's kind of the introduction. And then here, here's her, her focus. Phones now appear to be an extension of our body. We can't live without them. My observation, of course, involves the destructive nature of phones as it blinds us to see what's around us. As I stepped out of the bus, I put my phone in my back pocket and started walking towards my residence hall. As I look up to my surroundings, I realize how mesmerizing East Campus is. As I walked, I saw a few other students walking, and I saw something odd. I saw no phones. They weren't allured by the shining screens, but more by the shining blue sky. I juxtapose the two different environments that I live in day to day city campus, uh, east campus, and city campus. On city campus, you see heads looking down 
staring intensely at their phones. Why do they fail to see the wonders around them, unlike East Campus students? I thought it might have been because the ambience that East Campus evokes is so powerful. Students would just stop and stare. As I was, as I was getting closer to the door, I crossed paths with another student. And as he opened the door for me, he said with a smile, beautiful day, isn't it? It was a wonderful observation and it made me think that our generation isn't lost in the mindless technology world after all. Thankfully, nature is something that still amazes us and has the power of turning our attention to the moment. Okay. So, as we can see um, with this example, the, the student was, was very focused on, on the topic, picked up a lot of details, and in the coherence through from point A to point Z um, was really focused, okay? Um, and what I, I'll discuss this later, but what I really love about these projects is um, they really help the students, one, focus on what's in front of them um, and pay attention to things that they might not notice otherwise, but two, they really start to developing a nice sense of coherence in their writing um, and they focus on a lot of, a lot of detail um, that they might not normally do, okay? So, what are the categories of these observation journals? Uh, again, a mistake that I made initially was I said, oh, write on whatever you want, okay? Um, and then, again, that wasn't the best thing to do because I, I found students were writing on whatever they wanted and they weren't really observations. They were um, more like diary entries, which we'll get to in a bit. But so I really, um, throughout all of this, I, I, I had to kind of I'll hold their hands, I, I had to develop the categories, I had to develop a, a template on how to write them, but in the end, it was all beneficial for the student. Okay? So, category one, as we can see here, is culture-based observations, okay? So for example, uh, the cultural norm of one person holding the door for another. That kind of came out a little bit in Anna Maria's, but um, some students have focused solely on that topic. Um, number two, uh, language use-based observations, for example, how a certain buzzword or idiom is used among friends. Um, one that just comes to mind was uh, apparently um, students, were, particularly female students on campus were using the term apparently, um, and we'll, we'll use that as an example later if I can remember. Um, uh, classroom dynamics, uh, classroom dynamics based observations, those are very interesting. Uh, one student um, observed the students who sit in the front of the classroom volunteer more than those who sit in the back um, another student, I think, uh, observed that uh, one particular professor was uh, favoring the left side of the room as opposed to the right. Um, so those are, those are neat as well. Um, number four, uh, nature-based or environment-based observations. Uh, for example, uh, observing the first snowflake at dawn. Another student of mine who had lived in both Illinois and Nebraska noticed something very interesting that uh, she felt that the Illinois snowflakes that came down in December were, were larger and fluffier, and those that came down in Nebraska were smaller and grainier. And we've lived in both, and um, she was right on. I think for whatever reason, it could be the, the wind currents uh, from the mountains, but whatever um, it is, the, the snowflakes in Nebraska are a lot smaller than those that are in, in Illinois. Uh, number five, self-reflection-based observations. Um, being aware of particular changes uh, in emotion and realizing how it affects them. Uh, so if all else fails and they haven't observed anything, they can always um, reflect on how they're feeling that week um, and be real, real um, specific on, on particular emotions. And then uh, number six, I, I added that one. I, I, g I gave a talk on these observation journals a couple of years ago in Colorado, and one of the school teachers out there said, hey, why don't you... Um, include sensory-based observations, and I thought that was a great idea. So number six comes from the state of Colorado. Uh, example, being aware of certain tastes and the local cuisine or the aromas at dinner time in the neighborhood or in anything. So it could be, you know, uh, visual, um, auditory, uh, gustatory, uh, tactile, so any, any kind of sensory observation. Okay, so um, now we come to the assessment, okay? Um, as I had mentioned before, probably one of the biggest mistakes I made was I said, you know, you can write on anything 
um, just make sure it's an observation. And um, that didn't quite work. And so I, I developed that template where, you know, there was the lead in sentence and then the statement talking about the observation and then the explanation. Um, and the same thing with the assessment. Initially, I was just going to kind of grade these on whether they were, they, they had made a decent observation or not. Um, and there were issues with that. So I decided to make a pretty um, strict assessment. Now, you don't have to do this. Um, mine has six parts to it. You, you, can, you can pick one or two of these or, or create your own, but I just wanted to give you a general idea of what I um, use, okay? So the first one is content and cohesion. Um, how well has the entry generally expressed the observation through implementing the paragraph template? So, you know, have, have they hit all those points that are in the template? Um, that, that's, that's number one. Number two, observation focus, okay? How well does the entry focus on the specific observation and express it clearly in the paragraph? So how, is it focused, nice and tight, which is kind of another writing technique that I want them to develop as opposed to kind of being all out there? Because as we know, um, if you've taught writing or if you're a writing teacher, you know, that, that's one of the biggest things students struggle with is, is taking one point and going deep with it. A lot of times they want to hit one point and then uh, kind of do a bunch of superficial subpoints of that because uh, they get stressed and they don't know how to go deep. And that's another wonderful thing about these observation journals is they really help students take one point and go very deep with it. So uh, number two is, have they done that or not? Observation focus. Uh, number three, uh, development of the example and explanation. So how well is the example or explanation part of the paragraph expressed? Um, how, how well is the example part expressed? Um, so again, uh, when they give the example, we saw that Anna Marie went into a lot of detail, you know, to the fact where she even talked about meeting, uh, meeting another student and exchanging words. And um, she talked a lot about um, uh, the, the, different, the differences in the campuses and, and how she felt you know, the East Campus students were more engaged in, in looking at the environment and City Campus were more engaged with their phones. Um, so um, how well has that been expressed? Um, vocabulary use, um, I, I love to recycle vocabulary from week to week. So what they learn in week one is recycled in week two and what they learn in week two is recycled in week three. Um, and so I, I usually have them use one or two vocabulary from the week. I mean, I found that if they're putting three or four in there, it, it, it's kind of shoehorning um, and it really doesn't work. But if they can naturally get one or two in there, um, then that's good. Uh, takeaways. Um, this one's pretty easy to, it, it might seem difficult, but it's actually pretty easy to point out or, or, or observe while, um, while reading theirs. Um, does the writer appear to have learned something from the observation? So for example, um, I had a student you know, a while back that said, Oh, Americans love pets. I thought, well, you know, did they really learn anything from that? They could probably see it on TV. They could have heard about it. Um, whereas another student wrote, after a homestay with his American family, um, his observation was that um, in America, at least in the, his family and other families that he'd heard about, pets aren't just pets, but they're, they be, actually become members of the family. Um, and as you know, uh, Mr. Gable, uh, who's my... Uh, presentation partner is definitely a member of the family. Okay, <laughs> so um, so the takeaways are: um, has the has the student really learned something from the observation, or is it just something they've kind of observed and done it for the sake of the assignment? Okay, um, and then the last one: care and caution. Uh, does the entry appear to be carefully thought out and written, or does it appear to be quickly? penned in a matter of seconds, okay? So when I first did this, um, I, I did wanna see the student's actual handwriting and they did all the observations in green booklets, okay? And so um, I thought everyone was gonna take their time. Of course, I'm a very idealistic and I'm a dreamer and I thought, oh, everybody's gonna take a lot of time and do these. Um, well, half the students did, but there was a large percentage of one of my classes that just, you could tell they, they, they wrote these observations probably you know, from getting out of their car to, to the classroom. I mean, they were quickly penned, almost Ill, uh, illegible. I couldn't read what, what, what was on the paper. So I put this one into effect, and after I did, um, care and caution, um, 
they, everybody, 100% of the students took their time to write these. Now I should mention um, how each one of these categories is graded. It, it, it's on a very simple scale of five. I've found that giving 100 points on an assignment or 50 points it, in a way is kind of meaningless because the students are trying to figure out where are all these points coming from. Now if you've got a detailed 100 point system, um, that, that can be pretty intense and overwhelming as well. So I've just followed the, the, the basic philosophy that, um, that uh, less is best. Um, uh, and so five points, five is excellent, uh, four is very good, three is good, two is, well, this needs to do, be developed, you need help. And one is OMG, oh my God, you, uh, this, uh, this, you're in serious danger here. Okay, we need to rethink this, okay? Now there are very few ones that would come in. But so again, I would just base it on five, so any one of those categories, five was excellent, four was very good, three was good, two was okay, we, we need some help here, and one, you know, there wasn't much effort put into it, okay? So, um, let's take a look at the pitfalls and the solutions, okay? Um, I had a pretty big list of pitfalls in the very beginning. Um, there are about five or six, but um, I've kind of boiled those down to two categories, okay? Um, one was, a big issue was they were diary-like entries with no focus, okay? So, you know, I learned what time they woke up and, you know, how they placed their feet off the side of the bed and what they had for breakfast and lunch and dinner and who they called and struggling with this and that homework. But they weren't really observations. It was just sort of a listing of, you know, uh, you know what time they, they logged on to, to email and text and uh, Skype and do everything simultaneously with their family, you know. Um, interesting, but it wasn't a, a focused journal, uh, observation journal. Number two was multiple lists with no focus. So kind of like the diary, but instead of um, a diary of this is what I did throughout the day, it was, oh, you know, I made an observation about um, how people open the doors for each other on campus and how Americans can uh, have a tendency of greeting each other with their eyes and their smile. And it was kind of a listing of observations, but nothing that went really deep. So in some cases, I'd have five observations in one paragraph without much focus at all. Okay. So, how did I solve that problem, okay, or these problems? Um, essentially, um, uh, one was to review the template, okay? So, um, remember the template where um, I wanted the students to write a title and give the category and then a lead-in sentence and then the sentence that explained why that was of interest. So, I just reviewed that. Um, um, I don't know if all of you out there have... Um, an Elmo or a doc cam, but that's basically what I used is I um, just um, had the doc cam, uh, popped it up on the screen and showed the template again. And then we practiced an in-class writing. So I had them think about something that they observed on their way to class on that particular day. Um, and then I gave them about 15 to 20 minutes to write about it. And then we reviewed the rubric or the assessment. So the one that I just gave you with the categories of um, content and cohesion, uh, observation focus, development of the examples, vocabulary use, takeaways, and care and caution. So we reviewed that, and then I had a volunteer uh, give me his or her observation that they had written in that 15 to 20 minute period, and we popped it up again on the overhead, and then we used the rubric um, that I just mentioned, and we, we checked it off. So you know, did they have the title? Did they have the category? Did they have the lead-in sentence? Um, so we, we used the rubric to check the class written observation journal. Um, and then um, I addressed all the previous pitfalls that I, that I had mentioned, you know, listing and um, journal-like entries. And we, we talked about how this is not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a nice, fun, focused observation, okay? and. When I did this, um, it, it was like a Hollywood movie. Everything, you know, fireworks going off in the background, and um, it was wonderful. Uh, after that, if I had a student a class of, say, 22 students, um, I would say 21 did the correct kind of uh, observation journal, okay? I, I might have one that still kind of veered off, uh, veered off and, and, and did what they kind of wanted to do. You always have one that says, you know, I, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm gonna do what I wanna do. 
Um, so there, there might be one of those, but I had some classes as well where 100% did what I asked them to do, but it was only after um, I addressed those pitfalls um, through this uh, five-step process. Okay, everybody good out there? Okay, um, why don't we um, take a quick break, um, close your eyes, um, and inhale with me three times, okay? So we can get some oxygen into our lungs, which then gets into our blood and then into our brain. So start with one with me, inhale, the, the biggest breath that you've taken all day, and then hold it, and slowly release. Number two, inhale, hold it, and slowly release. And then the third one, in the shape of a heart, inhale, hold it, and slowly release. Okay, then if you're sitting down, uh, you can run like this, uh, move your legs, um, or you can just stand up, okay? Um, you should be much better right now, okay? Just as a side note, um, uh, I think it's in the current research that they say that you should, uh, Jensen, if you're interested in this, um, uh, he's got a book out on brain-based learning, and his name is Eric Jensen, uh, and he says that you should get your students up and moving about every 20 minutes. Uh, in order for them to continue to be focused during during your class. That makes sense. It's about 20 minutes or so that we kind of get a little fidgety, okay? Um, all right, so moving right along, um, uh, student reported benefits. Now, these are really interesting. Um, what I did after the first semester, um, grades were in, uh, everything was done, and so um, I, I gave them a survey and they, they knew that if they gave great things to say, they weren't going to get a higher grade. If they said nasty things, they weren't going to get a lower grade. Um, and so, but I, I just asked the students, um, there wasn't a survey really, um, mainly it was just sort of open-ended, um, pick one or two things that you felt the observation journals helped you with. Um, and it was almost an, an observation um, or a reflection on the observation journals. Um, and I didn't have them really write a paragraph, it was just notes. Um, so they could write three down three things four if they wanted, five if they wanted. But the interesting thing was, um, I, as you can see there, uh, N46, I had a total of 46 students from three classes. And the interesting thing for me was, um, they, they wrote a lot of the similar things, okay? So of those 46 students, um, I ended up with about 12 categories, as you can see there. Um, the biggest one was um, observation journals helped me become more aware of the details in my life. Okay, so the 24 out of those 46 students wrote something like that, like, I'm aware of details in my life, I'm, I'm aware of the things that I normally would pass up, um, I'm, a, I'm aware of being more meticulous, okay? Um, number two, they said that the journals help them um, with the simple moments in the life, by, or appreciate, sorry, help me appreciate simple moments in my life. So again, things that they might not be aware of in the past, um, they were more focused on. Uh, number three, uh, the journal seemed to help them uh, learn about the states and about their immediate environment. And there were 23 students that said that, and that really inspired me because I, I thought of my student um, from years ago that said they didn't learn anything about the city or the state um, that they were studying in uh, before they, they went off to California. And so um, I thought, okay, these observation journals are, are doing that. Um, number four, um, a lot of them, uh, as you can see there, 23 said that um, it improved their English skills, and some of them went into detail. The English skills were, were, were mainly um, writing and speaking and listening, because a lot of the observations that they made also included um, kind of recording conversations or, or, or looking at billboards that had English vocabulary. And so I think the big one for language skills was uh, reading, um, speaking, listening, vocabulary, and, and, and writing. Okay. An observation, okay. So I think uh, um, this, this really came out in, in the classes since then too, that um, you know, we, we talk about the five basic grammar or the five basic language skills, you know, reading, writing, speaking, listening, and grammar. And we forget that probably one of the most important skills out there is um, the art of observation. Because in becoming a good observer, um, you, you can pick up different grammar patterns better. Um, if you're um, observing people speak 
or, or listening, you're going to pick up um, ways to communicate. Um, if you're observing while you're you're reading, you're going to pick up vocabulary. You're going to pick up different um, sentence structures. Um, if you're observing the struggles that you go through when you're writing, um, you can maybe try to find ways to correct that. So I think um, in addition to those five main categories of languages skills, language skills, they ought soon to start incorporating observation as one of those. I mean, I personally have a list of 20 um, different language, language skills, not just five, but um, observation I think should be at the top of that list. Because okay? I always tell students, you can teach them anything in the classroom, but probably one of the most important things is uh, learning how to, to, how to observe, because that's going to help them in life, at their job, it's going to help them with um, their family, it's going to help them mainly with family, job, life in general. If they, they're in an area that might pose some kind of danger and they're aware of what's going on, they, you know, they might be able to save themselves. Okay? So, anyway, back to the student benefits. Um, enhance my own quality of life. I like that, that a lot. So um, being more observant about different things going on, they said their life just got better That's that particular semester. Um, number six, I helped them learn the differences between the states and their own culture so they were able to make comparisons. Um, I like this one a lot. Number seven, help me know myself. Okay, so 13 students said they got to learn and know more about themselves and that, that was really important for me. Um, help me recall the daily events and appreciate each day. So again, that, that notion of um, instead of passing up a day and worrying about next week in the test, they began to appreciate each moment and each hour and each day. Okay? Um, help them put down their phone and observe the world around me. Okay? So um, sadly, there are only three students that wrote that. <laughs> but obviously, in order to do this assignment, they did have to put their phone down to make all the wonderful observations that they did do. So only three wrote that on the paper, but I think all 46 had to do that at some point. Um, so give more confidence uh, in my own life. Um, that was interesting. I didn't do any follow-up questions, but I think they just meant um, being aware of things, and when you're aware of things like that, you're in more control of what you can and can't do. Um, and the last one, give. this was an interesting one. Only one student wrote it, but give my teacher a better understanding of who... I am. Okay? So those were the um, main categories that the students wrote on and now let me um, switch to teacher uh, reported benefits. Now these were mainly from me from the beginning but I've been giving talks on observation journals and um, a lot of teachers have started doing this as well and I've kind of co started collecting data so this is actually um, what I'm going to give you now. It's not just from me, but I'd say from about 10 to 12 other teachers. Um, and I also want to add at, at this point in the talk that, um, of course, this is directed towards higher education because that's what um, I teach. But um, I gave another talk about the observation journals in, Cal in uh, Colorado, um, and it was at an elementary school. And one of the teachers that I was giving the talk to raised her hand and said, oh, I teach the littles. And that, you know, so she was doing, <laughs> teaching, you know, kindergartners or first graders. I can't remember which one. I think it was first graders. But she said, you know, I can't have them write paragraphs, but um, they can draw little cartoons and do little, little bubbles. And so um, these observation, we'll, we'll get to in a second, the variations, but the observation journals themselves don't necessarily have to be paragraphs. They can be, you know, cartoons and, and bubbles as well. So... Um, uh, you, you can do these with just about any level out there, okay? So, uh, number one uh, that I noticed and other teachers did well, um, improves observation skills, obvious, right? Um, they're making these observations. So, um, one example that a student um, picked up and wrote about was how weather affects human behavior. So, they noticed on campus that the, the colder that it got, fewer students were saying hello and fewer students were happy. But way back in, you know, August when it was warm out, Everybody was jovial and lively and happy. Okay. Um, two, uh, helps with cultural assimilation. So um, even things like, for example, I've got there, what's appropriate uh, clothing at various gatherings. So if they're going you know, to a Friday night party versus a football game versus some type of uh, formal gathering or you know, going to office hours to, to meet their advisor, um, they, they became more aware of, of, of how to dress. Okay. Um, the next one is interesting. 
helps with understanding nonverbal communication, okay? Um, if you've studied about nonverbal communication, you know there are about seven elements, um, and the top of those, that, that list is um, how facial expressions express words and ideas. For example, I remember one student talked about, again, I, I talked about, the, I alluded to this earlier, um, a lot of females on a particular campus were using apparently, and when they would say apparently, they would kind of um, look up and, and apparently, okay, so they, they would kind of do something with their eyes and cock the head, like, apparently, we had a test today and nobody told me about it, okay. So um, they, they noticed um, when people were talking, the facial expressions that were used or the gestures that were used or the social distance that was apparent. So um, the students really picked up a lot on um, this nonverbal um, communication while doing these observation journals. Um, number four, uh, there uh, helps with improving written and spoken language. So observing vocabulary in action and using it. So this could be you know, observing billboards or signs or listening to conversations at the student union or listening to conversations at a restaurant. Um, so students were picking up a lot of vocabulary as well and then writing about it. And what was neat about that is they were writing uh, where it was used, how it was used, was it a formal situation or informal. So they learned a little bit about register um, on their own, um, you know, whether it was formal or informal. Um, they, they learned maybe how to use it, or in what context. So um, it, it really um, helped a lot with, uh, I remember my original, one of my original goals was um, if they could observe it, they could use it. And, and this happened quite a bit. So those were the teacher reported benefits for language and culture. Now let me talk about uh, the benefits of the students acquired uh, that helped with their writing. Okay, um, Number one is, the observation journals help develop detailed descriptions. Okay, we, we saw that in Ana Maria's um, detailed description of the non-cell phone use on East Campus. Um, and I've had so many where even students in the beginning, they would talk about um, the different kinds of birds that they saw, but then they would, they would just pick one particular bird and go into detail about that. So it really helped with the detailed descriptions. Um, and that was for both showing and telling became very much enhanced. So again, just focusing on the, on the detail in the writing. Um, number two, it, it helped with the depth and focus. So along with um, the detailed descriptions, um, they could pick one topic and go real deep and focus on that. And as I mentioned earlier on, that's one of the biggest things our students struggle with is, is taking one topic and going deep. And these observation journals just se seem to be a natural um, way to help them with that. And then the third, uh, writing benefit that they acquired was it, it just helps with helped with um, coherence and organization. So again, part of that was the template that I gave them, you know, starting off with the intro and then moving along to what interested them about it and then giving the example. Um, but I found that the short writings um, enhanced the order and clear thought. So again, I wasn't asking them to write 10 pages. It was just one, one paragraph anywhere from six to 10 sentences. Um, but the, the idea of their coherence and organization just became much more developed throughout the course of the semester, and it really helped them. And the last one is that uh, it was, this was kind of a joy to read, um, is that it helps make writing fun. Remember that was one of the very first um, goals, again, was to develop a love for writing or to make it fun. And I found that, again, I wasn't asking them to write 10 pages, they were just short paragraphs. Um, but in, in writing um, the short paragraphs weekly about whatever observation it was, um, they developed, as, as I've got there, um, the students respond positively to owning their topics. And that was the biggest thing was I was not picking the topics for them or selecting the topics for the students. Um, they were making observations and then writing on those. Um, and if you read anything in educational neuroscience or neuroscience itself, cognitive psychology, educational psychology, they all say one thing, and that's if a student can own the topic or own the material, um, they're going to learn it uh, a hundred times better. They really will learn it as opposed to just learn it for a test, okay? Um, and that's one thing that I found with this observation journal project is, you know, each one of these topics is carefully selected by the student, and they really enjoy that. And the other thing I've just mentioned is that these were not long writing assignments. They were very short paragraphs, but um, it goes to show that a little goes a long way because writing just short paragraphs throughout the semester 
really improve their skills um, in not only my own class, but um, you know, those that were taking biology classes or chemistry classes or anthropology classes would come back and report that their teachers were really impressed with their writing. And I think a lot of that um, was because you know, they, they were developing these great writing skills through um, writing about these interesting topics um, and in relatively a short format. Okay, so um, variations. Um, a lot of instructors have asked me, okay, these observation journals are great, but what else can you do with them? Um, and I've got there on the screen, um, uh, they lend themselves to poems, you can write poetry, short stories, flash fiction, creative essays, so which are, are kind of like autobiographical essays or creative essays about any particular topic, um, and academic research. So that last one, let me just um, explain a little bit. I've done projects called ethno ethnomethodology projects where students make observations and then create hypotheses. Like say they, for example, observe, oh, um, a great number of Americans like to run with their dogs or walk with their dogs, why is that? Okay, And then the students will create a list of hypotheses why they think the Americans are doing what they're doing or why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and then they'll go and interview people that are actually partaking of that activity and then juxtapose or compare and contrast um, their own hypotheses with um, the results from the interview. So you can do things like that, more ac academic based um, assignments, or like I said, this is a great segue into poetry. You can have the students make an observation and then write a poem about that. And when we get to the references at the end, there's an article that um, I'll have you look at. That's It's free online. It's from the um, or Ortisol, uh, Oregon t -cell, and I, I wrote a piece on how you can use observations to help write poetry. So they can be used for that as well. So, um, any questions? Um, unfortunately, this isn't live, and so you, you, you can't raise your hand and I can answer it right away. But remember what Nagarjuna said, question all things, including this. So if you have any questions about um, the observation journals, you can email me, patricktrandolph at gmail.com, and I'm usually pretty good about answering um, right away. Uh, again, just an overall summary, observation journals, they're just paragraphs, um, six categories that they can write about. You can do it at any level, um, and not only are they good for um, developing writing, but also assimilating into the students, the, the host culture um, in which they're living. So there's just so many different things and wonderful benefits that you can get from these observation journals. And again, the most important is they develop observation skills or they become more mindful. So um, last but not least, um, I have the reference page for you. And that is references and further reading. Okay. So um, a source that you might be interested in is David Eagleman's Incognito. Um, it's a great book on um, a lot of brain-based ideas, and, and some of it is observation, um, how we take in our culture. Um, I've got the Kabat-Zinn book for you, wherever you go, there you are, and it's all about mindfulness. And then I've got some articles that I've written on these observation journals for you, and they're all free online, and so you can download those and read them and get more details about what we talked about today. And the last one is Boosting Mindful Observations and Writing Skills with Freeverse. And so that shows how you can take these observation journals and then turn the entries into free verse for, uh, with your students. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to and watch this 45-minute session. Um, Mr. Gable was proud to be a part of it. Uh, thank you again. Uh, if you're interested in any other creative and learning ideas, uh, teaching and learning ideas, um, you can check out our YouTube channel. It's the same thing, Patrick T. Randolph. I'm also on Instagram. And again, like I said, if you've got any questions about today's talk, just email me. Have a great day, take care, and happy observing. Mm -hmm.